state history in the making tonight at Skelly Stadium on the campus of the University of Tulsa as two top-ranked teams get set to do battle their neighboring rivals, the number one-ranked undefeated Union Redskins against the second-ranked Jinx Trojans, who are the three-time defending state champions. Hello again, Don King. Pleasure to have you with us throughout the state here in Tulsa on TCI and in Oklahoma City on Cox Cable and Multimedia. For the next 30 minutes, we will dissect this game and take a look back that has made this great rivalry what it is. It's the 29th meeting between Jinx and Union and a rematch, an exact rematch, a deja vu of the 1998 state championship at Lewis Field last year when the Jinx Trojans defeated the Union Redskins. This season they met in week number three and the Union Redskins got the first break on a fumble and then Jason York burst in from 41 yards out in the second quarter to give the Union Redskins at home a 7-0 lead. Then comes a former Union quarterback, Zach Lassiter, in for the Trojans and he fires an 82-yard strike to one of the fastest players in the state, Brian Carter, and we are tied 7-7 at halftime. In the third quarter, the Jinx Trojans got the ball and counted on Nathan Hale transfer, Keywan Jones, for a big run to put Jinx ahead, or rather, this is Jason York for Union to put them back ahead, I should say, 14 to 7 in the third quarter. Now it's the Nathan Hale transfer, Keywan Jones. He ties the game on this eight yard run, and it's 14 14 after three quarters. In the fourth quarter, Bobby Klink, who had a big game in the state championship game a year ago, burst in from 14 yards, and the Trojans are on top for the first time in the fourth quarter. But with just a minute 27 remaining, Tyler Gooch showed the state that he could replace a Division I quarterback like Josh Blankenship, and he guides the Redskins to a game-tying touchdown in the waning seconds. Then the Redskins get the ball back. And on the last play of the game, Jake Gibbons' 48-yard field goal is just short. And this game will go overtime, the first time that these two squads have ever gone overtime in their previous 28 meetings. The Trojans get the ball first, settle on a field goal. And after the Union Redskins are denied on their first two plays in overtime, they call timeout, and Gooch finds Jay Felker for the game-winning score, and the Union Redskins have indeed, for the second straight year, beat Union in overtime and beaten them for the second straight season. Right now, the Redskins have gone all the way to an undefeated year, as they were last year, and number one in the state. They are number 10 in the country right now. Meanwhile, for the Trojans, they come back into this game at number two. As you take a look at the Trojan season, on TCI, we saw them blister Washington. They went to Fort Smith Northside and took care of the Grizzlies, who were playing for a state championship this weekend as well. Lost the Union, but then got into district play and rattled Muskogee. Took care of a state-ranked Bartlesville team. Handled Hale and Rogers, as you see, with ease. Got toward the stretch, beat a state-ranked Tahlequah team 62 to 15, beat a Memorial team striving for the playoffs, and then in the district championship, did not have much trouble with Broken Arrow. Once they got into the playoffs, they have breezed as well, beating a state-ranked Sepulpa team, beating a very good Owasso team, and then disposing of Lawton Eisenhower last week in the state semifinals, 32 to 6. For the Union Redskins, they opened their season and showed people around the state that they were a contender by beating Broken Arrow, a number five ranked team in the state. Took care of Muskogee and then the overtime win over Jinx. They then opened district play with a 44 to 12 win at Edmond. Held off a very pesky Stillwater team, 21 to nothing. Beat Enid without any trouble and then in a game that early in the year for the district championship, they both knew it. Union took care of Owasso as they did Sepulpa, Sand Springs, and Ponca City. Look at the three shutouts in a row. Then Muskogee, no problem in the playoffs. Had to block an extra point kick in overtime to beat B.A. And last week, as you well know, won in the state semifinals 24 to 14 to advance to the championship game again, and this time at Skelly Stadium. One of the reporters of this award-winning cast is J.B. Haney, and he's down on the sidelines. 
Thanks, Don. And one of the most interesting facets, I think, of the game tonight is the dedication and the preparation that both of these teams have gone through to get here tonight at Skelly Stadium. It really started back on December the 4th at Louisville in Stillwater. They prepared in the spring drills. They had the passing leagues. They had the strength and the conditioning drills during the summer. And then those awful two-a-days hot in August. Then they get the 10-game schedule, three games in the playoff, and now they're at home. Right in the backyard at Skelly Stadium with a full house. And Don, as you can see, it is a full house, a noisy house, but these kids have worked for it, they prepared for it, and it's come right down, right here in Skelly, for the full house, and I, can't, I just can't think of anything that would make it any better than that. Now back to Don and Dave. Thank you very much, JB. We will dissect this game as well as look back at last year's championship game as it is state championship week here at Skelly Stadium and a record crowd piling in of close to 40,000.